You're watching the KUSI News at 5. During the Senate impeachment trial of President Trump, Kentucky Senator Rand Paul attempted to have Supreme Court Justice John Roberts read a question that allegedly included the name of the whistleblower who helped start the impeachment inquiry. When the Chief Justice refused to read the question to protect the identity of the whistleblower, Senator Paul then later read the question on the Senate floor. Well, in response, YouTube removed a video that showed Senator Paul reading that question and allegedly saying the name of the whistleblower. YouTube said in a statement, quote, videos, comments, and other forms of content that mention the leaked whistleblower's name violate its community guidelines and will be removed from the site. A YouTube spokesperson also said that they have removed hundreds of videos and thousands of comments that contained the name. So joining us now to discuss this, this issue, how YouTube decides on what videos to censor, and also Democratic presidential candidate Michael Bloomberg's efforts to buy memes on social media is YouTuber and author Mark Dice. Good to see you, Mark. How are you? Thanks for having me back. So let's uh, talk about Rand Paul. He tried to get the name of the whistleblower out into the public uh, perception, the public eye, and YouTube shut him down. It's out there online. People can find it if they want to, but talk about just the idea of this kind of censorship and what should be censored and what shouldn't be censored. Now, he didn't say that this was the whistleblower. He didn't even mention the word whistleblower. He was asking a question about a certain individual's name who keeps floating around, who a lot of people have a lot of questions about, about their supposed or possible ties to kicking off the impeachment inquiry. And that was not allowed to be asked at the Senate trial, which is very strange. In this country, you're supposed to be allowed to face your accusers. So he asked the question on the Senate floor posted that video on his personal YouTube channel, and it was censored. And that's a very strange position for YouTube to be in, because just to mention somebody's name, now you can't post somebody's address, you can't even post somebody's personal email online on social media, that's called doxing, that's against the terms of service, but to just ask questions about a government employee now is not allowed. If you type his name onto Facebook or even into the comments on YouTube videos, it will be censored. Now, if this was during the Obama administration and things would probably be a little different because these Silicon Valley titans tend to be a very liberal oriented companies and I think there's a lot of double standards when it comes to enforcing their terms of service of what they will and will not allow on their platforms. Yeah if you think about just in general what should be censored and what shouldn't I understand that we try to protect rape victims identities and maybe the identities of politicians children and where they go to school and maybe their addresses and things because you know they might they harm could come to them if people know certain information about individuals. Do you see some kind of a line where maybe something should be censored? We're talking about the constitutionally protected right to face your accuser, to question them. And again, Rand Paul didn't name this person as the whistleblower. He was asking questions about a government employee. It's very interesting because YouTube does allow, uh, I think, terms of service violations when it's done by people on the left. There's a video on YouTube, on CNN's channel right now of them harassing, I would say, a poor old woman in her front yard who shared something on Facebook that was originally posted by a Russian troll farm. They confronted her in her front yard when she was doing yard work saying that she shared some Russian propaganda. It mentioned her name. You can see the address on her house. And is that not harassment? Is that not violating her privacy? That's allowed on CNN's YouTube channel. But a member of Congress isn't allowed to ask questions about an individual that may have been involved in kicking off an impeachment inquiry to try to remove the president of the United States. It doesn't seem right. Let's move on to Michael Bloomberg. He's running for president. He got into the race late. He's a billionaire and he's spending lots of money. And one of the new things he's been doing is trying to get on social media more and more. He hired a company called Jerry Media to come up with these self-deprecating memes. And we've got a few of them. And let's just show some of them. Uh, basically, this is kind of a screenshot of what appears to be a conversation with Mike Bloomberg and this, uh, what is it, golfers doing things. And it says, can you post a viral video of me hitting a hole in one? I think something like that could be fun and engaging during the Democratic primary. 
and then Golfer says, can you send me the video? And then Bloomberg allegedly says, no, you have to make it. Can the caption say Bloomberg is a hole in one? So here's just one of them. Well, we've got a few of them. Let's talk about the first one. What do you think of all this? Is it working? What are, what's just your general idea? I can see the strategy behind it. He's trying to reach younger voters. These are some very popular Instagram accounts that uh, post funny memes about a variety of different topics with many millions of followers each. So they created these fake uh, DMs, these direct messages uh, to make it appear as if Bloomberg was you know, interacting with them. Right. And if you read the comments on a lot of these, it's not being very well received because it kind of comes across as very disingenuous, very astroturf type of a campaign. This is quite different than just posting an ad. These are commissioned, you know, supposed to be funny, entertaining you know, memes, yeah. cartoons that are being posted on pages that usually don't have anything to do with political humor. And some of these, I can't tell whether it's actually one of his, you know, m paid memes or a parody of the memes. Yeah. Some of them I don't think are even quite that funny. Many people are saying that this is coming across quite boomerish, you know, sort of, a, right. you know, somebody who's not in their element trying to reach through a community of younger people where he's a little bit out of place. So I'm not yeah. sure how this is going to play out. There's a bunch of them. We'll just give you one more if we can, and, and we'll just read this one. Uh, here's one from Do You Even Lift? Hello, congratulations on your followers, Bloomberg says to this uh, influencer. Can you post a viral video of me doing 30 push-ups? I think something like that could make me look like a strong candidate during the Democratic Party. And then, of course, Do You Even Lift says, can I see the video? And Bloomberg responds saying, sending now, I tapped out after 13, should we loop it? Eh, cute, yeah. maybe funny. Anyhow, this is all scripted. Here's one from uh, Kale Salad. Hello, Mr. Salad, can you post this meme to make me seem cool for the upcoming Democratic primary? Michael Bloomberg is like kale salad, tough and tasteless, but ultimately good for you. And then kale salad says, I don't know, it's not that funny. Bloomberg says, I'll give you a billion dollars. And then kale says, what do you want the caption to be? President Trump has a very strong and committed following online that create organic memes for him, many of which he has reposted himself. And that's more authentic. The, you know, people on Reddit, people on Instagram that are making art and sharing it, and it goes viral. So this is trying to synthesize that. And, and many Bernie supporters are not uh, very well <laughs> receiving this. Okay. And he has a pretty uh, strong online following as well. Bloomberg doesn't quite have that. A lot of his supporters tend to be older, not so social media savvy. So on the surface, I can see that this is a very interesting idea, maybe yeah. something to try, um, but he may be going a little overboard and it might be sort of backfiring a little bit with people seeing that it's quite inauthentic sure. and astroturfing. Let's see if it's a hit and a miss and, or a swing and a miss or a home run, uh, time will tell. Mark Dice, good to see you, Mark. Thanks to be back. Thanks for coming on the program. Be sure to order my new book, The Liberal Media Industrial Complex from Amazon.com or click the link in the description below.